Good evening, welcome to a new video where I'm going to discuss very briefly the Meta Digitize package. Uh, this is a quite an interesting package. So I've been um, looking at this PDF that uh, was released in 1991, I think, or 1990. That's a very interesting PDF because it's a compilation of historical statistics of the um, Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, which was uh, became independent from uh, the Netherlands, from the Kingdom of the Netherlands in 1839. So this is these are statistics since the beginning of the, we could maybe say the modern state of Luxembourg until 89. And then of course we have the statistics after 89 readily available. Um, so this PDF is quite interesting um, and it's, it's available online on the website of the National Statistical Institute. Um, however, the data that is in there is trapped. So I'm quite sure that uh, if I were to ask and if I were patient, I would get the data um, delivered, but it would probably take quite some time for them. I, I'm fairly certain that most of this data is probably still archived on some tapes, on magnetic tapes and things like that. So it wouldn't be very easy to get them out in a tidy format. So I thought, hey, why not try to, you know, it's 600 pages, but once in a, in a while I would, could get a table out of it. Um, it would be nice. However, the very first uh, statistic, so at first you have all these things that uh, present to you the, um, the subdivisions of the country. Uh, nowadays it's a little bit different because some of these, uh, these are called communes, some of them have uh, um, joined together to form a new one, or some have been separate maybe as well. Um, so th some of these don't exist anymore. And here you actually have a very interesting... So this is where I lived before. I didn't know that uh, it, it became uh, its own commune in 1849. And then it got together with these three communes into the commune of Luxembourg, the capital. So it was it's interesting to, to look at things like that. I really enjoyed that. Um, the first uh, statistic that you really find is not a table, but this graph. And this is a bit of an issue because how do I get the data out of it? So I was, uh, I'm, I was looking online. So I'm, I'm fairly familiar with um, scraping procedures, scraping from PDF or scraping from uh, HTML tables or, or websites in general, tables or not. Uh, but I've never scraped pictures. And uh, well, this is where Meta Digitize um, comes into play. So this package is really interesting because it allows you to do just that, scrape the data that is in these in pictures like that. Um, it's a very interactive process. So that's why I thought I would make a video instead of a blog post. Uh, but it's relatively easy to use. It's a bit, uh, of course, time consuming because as I said, it's an interactive process. So you have to do it by hand, uh, picture by Per picture but it really works well it works well and it uh, works much faster if you were to to do each point one by one so let me show you how this works so i already uh, digitized this picture and um but i will start from from scratch by the way i will of course link this vignette in uh, the description read it um because it explains everything so this video is really just me showing it to you but this vignette explains everything um, there was just one thing that I thought, well, it's explained in the vignette. It's not that it's not explained, but I, uh, as a user, I was not really expecting the behavior that I, that I saw at first. So I thought that maybe this video, I would immediately show you what interests me. And I guess most people, if you, if you follow the vignette, what you'll get at first are, um, only the, uh, summary statistics of your variables. The raw data is in there, so you can get to the raw data. Um, it's not that you have to rerun everything, but there is a way to just get it faster. Uh, basically, by, by typing here, maybe let me zoom in. Um, basically, by, by typing uh, by, by typing a summary equals false, what you see what you see here, you can you get the raw data immediately. But if you don't have that, you first have the summary statistics, and then you have to rerun the thing, not the whole digitation process, but you have to run the function to get the raw data. It's, it's a small detail, but I thought uh, that I could uh, immediately do it like that. 
So um, what I did first, so this is also where actually to use this package, I highly recommend you do that on a dual monitor setup. It's really, so I don't know how it's going to work here on one screen, so I'm just recording one screen. Uh, but if you have a dual monitor setup, it's much better to, to do it on a dual monitor setup and to have a mouse as well. If you have a touchpad, get a mouse for this. You will see why. Uh, so let me let me run this. So uh, another detail, I um, took a screenshot of this graph because you need to, so the, the, the function MetaDigitize expects a folder in which you have all the pictures that you want to go to, okay? So this is my folder. And in there, I have only this picture, but I could have 10 of them, and then you would go over them one by one. So let me run. Uh, let me first start R. Yeah, I can start it here, doesn't really matter. So as I said, it's a very interactive process. So let's run the code, and let's see what happens. Um, so do you want to process new images, import existing data, or edit existing data? So in my case, because I'm st starting from scratch, uh, I removed the folder. So MetaDigitize creates a new folder uh, just next to your pictures, which contains all the metadata. So this is what you would, uh, if you would like to import this existing data, this is where the data would be saved. So in my case, I would press one, then are all the plots the same? Well, I just have one, so it's the same. But uh, if I had more of them, so it's a scatter plot. Uh, well, it's a line plot if you want to be pedantic, but it's a scatter plot. And this is the plot. So now you uh, see this plot. So this is why I'm saying if you have a dual monitor setup, it's much better because you can put this plot in the other monitor and maximize it. Um, so in my case, I won't do it because I want you to see, but this is really where <laughs> a second monitor is quite useful. So do you want to flip or to rotate? In my case, I continue. By the way, if you, well, I guess it depends a little bit on, um, on, on your workflow, but if you have a lot of pictures that are rotated, maybe you can rotate them first using image magic. So there's actually also an R package for that. Especially if they're all rotated the same way, it's much easier. You just do uh, a batch rotation with uh, image magic. You get all your picture rotated, and then you can start digitizing them. So in my case, I will continue. So what is the Y variable? Just asking the name. So in my case, I will do it in French. Pluie for, um, for rain. Pluie is rain. What is the X variable? Is year, or in my case, in French, année. Uh, and then here is, what, here is where, where the magic happens. Um, you get four steps. Step one, click on one known value in the, on the y-axis. Uh, this will be your first point of reference. So in my case, uh, we have here on the y-axis 300 milliliters. Uh, are those milliliters? I guess they are. Um, regardless of the year, so that's the minimum. So I could maybe type click here. And this is also, again, where having a mouse is useful and where having that on a very big screen is useful as well because where you click needs to be very precise because this is what MetaDigitize will use to calibrate the picture and then get all the other dots. Uh, then uh, Y2, so I'm over here, so this is 300, maybe this one that looks to be something like maybe 550. Oh, I'm a bit, well, it doesn't really matter if I'm not uh, on the exact same um, same line, but uh, would have been cleaner. Uh, then same for X. So this is easier. Uh, I could, this is 1940. And then uh, I could go over here to 1960. And then what is the value of Y1? So as I said, 300. Y2, so I guess 550. So again, if you have this in full screen, it's much easier. Uh, and it's it's approximate. It's approximative, of course. I mean, it will never be as precise as the real data, but I think it's close enough. Um, X1, 1940, and X2, 1960. Oh, my cat is visiting. Uh, so then are some uh, axes on a log scale? No. Uh, but if they were, you could. Recalibrate? No. So if you think that uh, you might have misclicked or anything, in my case, I will say no. 
And you can then also specify groups. So if you have multiple groups, so this is actually very well explained in the vignette where you have uh, three species of uh, iris flowers. In my case, I don't have any of these, so uh, I can just um, press enter. And now I can click on every point that I want to add. Okay. And for, for some reason, those over here, if I maximize the window, yeah, this is the first one you see. If I maximize the window, there's no issue. I can click on every every point. Um, if I don't maximize the window, as you see, the first ones over here don't work. So this is, again, it, it might also be an issue of my window manager. So I use this uh, tiling window manager. So the window the window is tiled. So maybe this plays a role. I don't know. So I'm very I'm not doing this very cleanly, as you can see. Doesn't matter, I think you understood. So basically, now you click everything and the software is, is able to determine, actually with great precision, it really depends on how well you calibrated this for these first dots. If you really did a good job, then you will, uh, then yeah, then you, you will have a result that is really, really not bad. Actually, when I did this on, uh, on full screen, I, I really think that I got something that was very, very clean. But, I mean, for demonstration purposes, this will be good enough. So now that I'm done, I can click on this red uh, square, and that's it. So here I have 78. I get asked if I want to add more or delete or whatever. I will just continue. Um, I can add another group if there is one. In my case, there isn't, so I will just finish. Um, yeah, do we want to enter another sample size? No, I'm fine with that. Congratulations, looks like we've finished uh, digitizing. Great, so how do I get to the data now? Well, uh, if I look at the object pluie, which means rain in French, I get my raw data right here. But this is the print method. So the print method shows you uh, what the data looks like. But this is not, so the pluie is not a data frame, so you cannot immediately start working uh, it's a list right and this element maybe i can yeah this element dollar can't pre so can't pre dot png is the name of uh, of my picture this is the data if i didn't have summary false instead of seeing the raw data i would see some summary statistics um but i mean that's that's totally totally fine because you can then get back to the uh, to the raw data as i said before Anyway, if I want to get this as a table, uh, I can do something like that. Uh, and this should give me a nice table. Oh, no. Ah, and you know why? This is because I have this scatter plot here. This is because um, this is how you would get to the data if I had summary true. But now that I have summary false, it's easier. I just need to get to my... Um, yeah, just need to get to this and convert it. I don't even need to convert it because this is already a data frame. And, and, and there you have it. Uh, this is this is the data. So now, of course, years uh, are integers in our plot, but here they're not. So uh, if I look at, at, at pre-data frame, I have something here, you know, that is not uh, entirely, entirely integer. <laughs> it's not really an integer. But again, if you really click with high precision, you'll have something very close to integers, and you you can just round. I mean, you know you know that this is 1900, and you know that this is 1949 uh, or 50 rather. This I really I this was not really well extracted. So you have maybe to correct a little bit, but I mean this really saves a lot of time. It really saves a lot of time. Um, it is an interactive process. I don't think that it would be easy to automate this in any way with some artificial intelligence or whatever. I I mean, I guess it could be feasible, but it would be tricky uh, to do. <clears throat> this, I think, is works really well. It's uh, quite easy to use, as you saw. Um, it works with a lot of different plots, not just cataplots, with histogram as well and some others. Again, read the, uh, the vignette. So this is really nice, and it's a good way to to get to this uh, very old uh, old data that 
again, it's probably not lost, but it's probably archived somewhere. And then you have this huge table. It's probably archived somewhere um, where it wouldn't be too easy to get to. And then, yeah, so I will, I will have a lot of work. I think I will do that slowly on tables. So most of it is tables. And uh, this should be easy because, as you see, uh, the, the, it has been OCRized, OCRized, so this should not be too complicated. Well, I mean, this table will be tricky, um, but it's, I find this fascinating. Um, if, you, if you find PDFs like that, of documents like that, from like historical statistics, please send them to me. Uh, I would, in the comments below, I would be really, 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 really interested in, in looking at that for other countries. I find this absolutely fascinating. Oh, this? This graph is, well, that's really disgusting. So 3D graphs in the 90s already. Yeah, very interesting. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, again, I hope you find this um, useful. And if you find historical data sets like that, please send them to me. I would be really interested uh, in uh, studying them. So have a nice evening and uh, a good week ahead.